Come on, if you need a breakthrough, I've been here. Let me hear you make some noise. Habakkuk 2.4 says the just shall live by faith. But how does one do that? Live by faith. Let's find out today on another edition of Faith to Live By with Pastor Larry Millender and Pastor James Salter. I said breakthrough is coming. Breakthrough is coming. Thank you for joining us today. This is Pastor Larry Millender. I'm here with my co-host today, Pastor James Salter. And this is Faith to Live By. It's been a couple of weeks since we got together studio-wise to record. You were traveling, vacationing, then you were out in Texas checking on your mom. But, uh... Always good to get together and talk about I, the Word. I really do look forward to this time, Pastor Larry. You just don't know being with you and and hopefully imparting some measure of truth and revelation for our listeners that will help them take their life to another level where living by faith is concerned and seeing the goodness of God in, in this moment in time in our life. So I'm glad to be here and, and to be ex- and excited to share the Word. Over the last couple of weeks, I've had several people tell me they've been listening to the program, that it had been a blessing to them, that it inspired them. Uh, one of them told me it, it helped her to get through her day. Um, but we'd like to list, uh, hear from our listeners occasionally, either uh, email or phone call or whatever. We'd like to, to know if we're touching people, and, and we know that we are. I hear it from different people yeah. in the area. But um, our goal is to help you to live in victory, to live above your circumstances and not beneath them, and to be everything that God's called you to be. Have everything He's called you to have. Do everything He's called you to do. You know, I believe that we as believers and Christians— Servants of God, we're called to live a victorious life. And um, I was preaching Sunday, this past Sunday morning at Church 360 in Tallahassee. I, I preached on peace. First time I preached on that subject in a long, long time. But as I was sharing about the peace of God, I said from the social media uh, apps that we have today, many of them I don't understand. I have a Facebook account, but I don't twit and tweet and all that stuff, you know, but they got the Twitters right. and Instagram. They, When I called it out, people named several different um, means of social media I'd never heard of. But I said, just on Facebook alone, when I look at it every day, from the appearance of what I see, it looks like a lot of people are living defeated lives. I mean, they air so much negative stuff of what they're going through, they're going under. There, there's one person that I think of been on my Facebook page. It's every other day. We're going under. We're not going to make it. We need help. We're financially struggling. We're sick. And I'm thinking, and those are ministers. That, that's a pastor couple. Yeah. I think, man, if that's what they're airing, there's no telling what they're preaching and saying from the pulpit. And their people have to be going through yeah. defeat to be hearing that all the time. But well, I, 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 I just interject real quickly. I think, I think, Pastor Larry, that part of what could be taking place is, and, and I know that you and I, we've had conversations about this through the years and and from the standpoint of of really even though culture is trying to shift and times are changing you and I we've we, again we've discussed this and we've said that we're, we're not going to water down the gospel we're not going to uh, be ashamed or, or be fearful of offending people with with truth and revelation and kingdom and I'm just I'm just wondering if if part of the ill of society that's taking place is because as a whole there there has been a watering down of a gospel trying to uh, appease to the masses and not be offensive and um, you know Jesus to a degree he was offensive but he wasn't offensive intentionally every time there were sometimes he had some harsh words but it was always toward the religious people but but his bent and heart to uh, you know most everyone in Israel and the sick and the lame and the hurt and the bruised and the crushed his heart and his bent was to 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 help them to deliver them to to set them free and and I, I think that we could be doing society an injustice by not wanting to preach the whole counsel of the word of God like not talk about the holy spirit or talk about the gifts or talk about the kingdom now or talk about victory and actually i think it might have been you either 
within the last day or two says something about even toward our youth now they're they're trying to institute where they can have mental health days and and things like that and as believers we we're stronger than that there, there's more endurance in us because greater is he that's in us than he's in the world and so you know again i, I just we, we have to preach the word we, we can't be ashamed of the gospel paul said for it is the power of god unto salvation so um most of us are stronger than what we think of ourselves there's more endurance there's more power on the inside of us especially being born again and filled with the holy spirit and so we can't just succumb to our surroundings but we have to do what jude said and continue to build ourselves up in our most holy faith praying in the spirit, praying with our understanding, standing on the word. Um, you know, we've, I think, many places gotten away from the word of faith, confession, declaring, decreeing, uh, meditating the word day and night. And, and and I think if we can readjust and, and start building back on that firm foundation, things will shift in our life and things will shift in our culture and things will shift in our society. You know, in this day and time that we live, and I'm about to turn 65, so I've been around for a while, uh, over half a century. <laughs> that makes it sound like a long time, doesn't it? Um, there is a victim mentality in the world today, and it's permeated the church. It's permeated every area of every, the fabric of society, a victim mindset. Everybody's a victim. Every, most everybody feels that somebody's hurt them, wounded them, offended them, rejected them. There's something that, that changed over the last 20 to 30 years in society. And it's not just in America. It's everywhere but, but America. Mm-hmm. There's so much craziness, political correctness type of stuff that's created an environment of being a victim. I am not a victim. I am a victor. I have the the victory that overcomes the world, which is my faith. And and that's not to say that that people have not been wounded, hurt, and offended. But but re, but remaining a victim is a choice. Um, you know, I mean, I, heck, I uh, I knew three or four of my great grandparents knew all my grandparents, blessed with some longevity in our family, but. I can remember as a little boy, my, my grandmother, my Gaga, who I lived next door probably for the first 12 or 13 years of my life, next next door to my grandmother and granddad. But I can remember as a little boy, Pastor Larry, her, her kind of prepping me for life. And she would quote this quote, remember, she would say, she was, James Allen, remember, sticks and stones may break your bones, but words can never hurt you. And And so she was trying to pass on to me that offenses will try to come, hurt will come, being done wrong, um, it's going to take place. I mean, even Jesus said in this world, you'll have tribulation. But the reality is as, as believers and as, as, as spirit filled people, Pastor Larry, we don't have to stop in a place called victim, that there is a realm of victory beyond the victim mentality. And I, I just choose, I, I choose to set my mind on things that are above, that things that are good, things that are noble, things that are wholesome, things that are of a good report. I, I choose. I, I make a choice. And so when it comes to living a life of victory or, or, or living in, a, in the realm of a victim mentality, it really boils down to a choice, Pastor Larry. It, it comes down to a choice. And and so I, I choose to live in the realm of victory and, and not allow those tactics and schemes of the enemy through other people to get me off track of, of what I was born to do. You know, I've had people to say to me, because I, I came up rather rough, uh, could have been a victim. My mother died when I was 14 in the ninth grade. A year later, not even a year later, my brother Cliff died from injuries from Vietnam War. Then the following summer, my dad died. So between the age of 14, having just turned 14, and just over 16, I lost my mom, my brother, and my dad. Mm. And my brother, Gary, and I, uh, we went through a lot of stuff. Some family members reached out to us. Some of them rejected us, didn't want us around. Uh, we'd gotten into things that were not wholesome. And some folks would like to have seen us disappear. <laughs> but we made it. Yeah. And people actually said, 
if you could go back and change things, what would you change? And I have thought about this before. And uh, I think the things that we went through, not that they were good things, but the things that we went through formed us and shaped us and molded us and made us into what we are today. Our life experiences can teach us a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Um, I developed out of those years, those teenage years from the time I was 14 till I was 20, when I got married, uh, Lane and I got married, I was 19, barely 19. We started going to church that year, committed our lives to Christ, started serving God, and we've been there ever since, been 45 years. But I think back about those teenage years, 14 to 20, 14 to 19, those were formative years. We made a lot of mistakes. I made a lot of mistakes. Um, Things that I wouldn't do again that were not wholesome, as I said. But I am the man today that I am because of stuff that I went through. Now, I've watched some people that I grew up with that were involved in things like I was. Some of them are dead today. Many of them have died. They died prematurely, died early. Drug overdoses, shot and killed, whatever. But I value the things that I did go through because they created something in me to want more. I didn't want to be a victim. I felt like a victim. As a teen, I I, I promise you, I felt like a victim. (coughs) I remember even going through a period of depression as a teenager. Once my mom and dad had died, feeling abandoned, uh, feeling rejection, feeling not wanted, unaccepted. Um, We were struggling. But when I made that decision to live for God, right at age 20, it turned everything around. Uh, it, It changed my viewpoint because I realized that God was my source and my helper, and he would see me through things if I made the right choices and decisions. So, Pastor James, I wouldn't change a lot of things about those years because I know that it that put a seed in me to want a better life. You know, it's, it's very amazing when you look back over, you know, your life, if, if, if a person will get still enough and quiet enough and and reflect back over their history, their life that they, you know, they can, can't remember everything, but there, you know, there's going to be highs and lows that, that you remember in life and, and to understand and realize that even in the moments when we were hurting, when we were down, when we felt abandoned, heck, it, it could have been more than a feeling. There really could have been abandonment there <clears throat> and there, there really could have been hurt and wounds and pain and and as life progresses and and as the lord lead has led us on to and to look back and know that even the moments when we couldn't see jesus we couldn't feel jesus we couldn't hear jesus we didn't even know jesus but to know now looking back that even because even though we didn't know him didn't keep him from being attracted to us and being in those moments of our life with us, even when we didn't know that he was there. To me, that that's powerful and that's profound. And to, to realize that he causes, I mean, the word tells us that he causes all things to work together for the good. I, I went through a lot of stuff, crazy stuff. Most of it was self-induced. But even when there was self-sabotage on my part, God, God didn't give up on me. He didn't get angry. He didn't get mad. He didn't turn his back on me. But like a good father, he, he, he walked this thing out. And he knew there would be a moment in my life that I would have a radical Jesus encounter. And I, I don't know if I've said this on, on our broadcast or not, but when I had my Jesus encounter, Pastor Larry, I wasn't at a church, wasn't at an altar, no preacher around, no other believers were around. I was in a crack house. I had been there for days outside of Dallas, Texas, August of 1989. And I'm telling you at two or three o'clock in the morning, Jesus came and radically changed my life. And I walked out of that crack house and have never walked back in one. And that's will be 30 years in August. And, and so Jesus knows how to reach us. He, I think every one of our listeners and those who aren't even listening to the broadcast yet, Jesus has their number. He, he knows their name. He knows your name. 
and don't don't stop where you are in life because your best is yet to come. There's a whole lot more ahead of you than behind you. But allow the experiences and and allow the things of our history to mold and shape us for the good, not for the bad. And be that victor and not the victim that you've been called to be. You know, there's such a, a mindset in the world today of that victim mentality. Um, what was me? There, the world's a crazy place, Pastor James. There's a lot of chaos in this world. I, I was thinking, I think a couple of days ago, I was thinking back to of my childhood days of being almost 65, thinking back to the early days growing up in Carabelle. There was such a simplicity of life. Um, in those days, people didn't lock their doors, didn't close the window. We didn't, couldn't close the door to the window. We didn't have air conditioning. It was hot. Uh, <laughs> but it was a different world back then. We live in a society now that is crazy. I mean, it's chaos. And if you're not careful, you will let that mindset infiltrate your life. You know, Paul said this in Romans chapter 12. He said, don't be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We have to change the way we think. My dad was an alcoholic. When I was a little boy, I remember my dad drinking, being drunk. And in his last years after my mom died, he was drinking every day. He was an alcoholic. I determined early on that I would not be an alcoholic. And I know people said, well, it runs in the family. Well, it was running from me because I wasn't giving into it. I drank as a teenager, drunk, doing drugs. But I remember an era of my life where I thought, this is not good. This is not what I want. My dad died at 51 and a half. Hmm. Uh, too young to die. Yeah. But... If we allow the world to squeeze us into that mold, to, to shape us and to form our outlook. Someone said years ago, your outlook determines your outcome. As a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. We have to make decisions. And you, you said something earlier that I think a lot where a lot of people miss it. Much of what we go through in our life is of our own doings. It's our own choices, our decisions, or lack thereof. Sometimes it's not a decision that you made. It was the lack of making a decision or lack of making a choice that allowed circumstances to overwhelm you and allowed those circumstances to take charge of us and then begin to dictate our life to us. So we have to make the right decisions, the right choices. We have to, to be around the right people. Um, there, there are times in our life where we have to cut certain people off, cut them out of our life. If, if they're not going where we're going and if they're pulling us down, then we have to make quality decisions to change our life. Well, and, and I think that's a very, very powerful point, Pastor Larry, because it does it does come down to, to choices. You know, a lot of places in the scriptures, it talks about choose, 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 choose. And um Sometimes people choose not to choose. And, and so they're, you know, it's almost like trying to ride a fence and you know what happened, you know, what can happen if you try to ride a fence, it can, it can possibly hurt. But the, the reality of it is though, is it, it comes down to, to discipline. It comes down to a spiritual d- discipline of, of making a decision to choose to, to, to think on the kingdom versus to, allow your mind to run on and think about the worst possible case scenarios. It's a discipline to, to, to think faith, to, to speak life, to choose hope, to, here you go. It's a choice to see the glass half full versus half empty. And I know for many people that, that doesn't come easy. Um, I don't think it was easy. It came easy to me too, but over the early years of, of me walking with, with Jesus, um, I developed that discipline and was graced to change the way that I thought about life and circumstances. And so now, Pastor Larry, being, being positive, being a type of a Barnabas, an encourager, it comes easy for me because I've, I've disciplined and trained my mind. I've changed my mind how I see stuff and, and how I think about stuff. And that's what it comes down to. Well, that discipline and training uh, 
we're admonished along that line. Paul in, in Corinthians, he talked about being like a boxer, being like a runner. You condition yourself. Uh, I remember playing sports in high school. Um, I loved football. Loved playing football. Loved it all, really. But football was rugged. In August, when we had what's called two-a-days, and they're about to start those again now, uh, the teams are playing fall football. I hated those two-a-days. Early morning, 5.30, 6 o'clock in the morning in August, mid-August, the heat, the humidity of North Florida. Late evening, 6, 6.30 in the evening. And not only was it hot and humid, but the mosquitoes and the dog flies, it was, it was brutal. Yeah. But... At the end of those practices, we practiced a couple of hours, and at the end of the practice, Coach Tech Jones, who, who I think molded a lot of us, we don't realize today what all he did put in us. He, he was he was a disciplinarian, but he was an instructor and a teacher. Um, he would make us run the gassers, the wind sprints, you know, 20-yard 20, 20 sprints. Man, it felt like your gut's coming out of you. And, and he, he would tell us, suck it up, boys. Get your second win. I can still hear it. And that's been almost 50 years ago. But that's what we call conditioning. If you're not conditioned through the practice, you wouldn't last through the game. And I think in our spiritual walk, we have to get conditioned. I, I've, I've seen people over the years, in the years that we've been serving God, which have been 45 years, I've seen people... In the early days when Elaine and I came to the Lord, hundreds of people came to Christ in Caribou. First Assembly of God went through an 18-month revival, and hundreds of people came to Christ. It affected every part of the, the town, every church experienced revival, even the county. And I remember after a few weeks, we started seeing them fall by the wayside. They were dropping like flies. And... Uh, before long, I looked around and thought, where are they? Yeah. They're gone. They didn't discipline themselves. They didn't make a long-term commitment. Yeah. They thought that by making a decision for the Lord, that everything would be hunky-dory and, and peaches and cream overnight. And it's not that way. You have to walk the trials of life out and let God do the things in your life to cause you to be a victor. You, you nailed it earlier. You said, you know, the scripture, Romans eight twenty eight, and we know that all things work together for the good to those that love God and call according to his purpose. That's still a truth today that we have to live by. Yeah. And, you know, again, just reverting back to, <clears throat> excuse me, what Jesus said. He said, in this world, you will have tribulations. But he didn't stop there. He said, but be of good cheer. I've overcome the world. So what that tells me, well, even Paul said it. Our affliction is but for a moment, and so it, it, you know one of the one of the the key things that that I've disciplined myself in, Pastor Larry, and and how I have set my mind and my thought pattern is is when I face something difficult, if I face some questions or, or some pressure or anything like that, that the first thought that I have, Pastor Larry, this is just for a moment. That I've heard you say this many times through the you know twenty plus years that I've. Come to to know and and love you. It's this this too shall pass, and so on the very onset when when we're facing giants or, or facing adverse circumstances or situations, it, uh, it it could come in a plethora of uh, ways. But the the first thought that we've got to have is number one: this too shall pass. This is but for a moment. This is a a little blip in the road, and I'm going to grow from this. I'm going to get wiser from this. Jesus is going to get the glory out of this and turn this whole thing around because he's for me and not against me. And then just have the patience and the endurance to stick with Jesus, to stick with the Holy Spirit, to stick with the word. Give give, give uh, the kingdom of God an opportunity to, to manifest and to show up and to turn things around. And oh, by the way, I mean, this broadcast is all about faith and living by faith and being strengthened in faith. And it says, it says in, in the word that faith is now. And so our posture is whatever we're believing for right now, I'm believing it's coming. Faith is now. And so I, I believe now and I'm looking forward with an outstretched neck, which is what hope is. For the manifestation of it in this realm. So I, I've i got the kingdom. We have the kingdom on the inside of us. That's the root of our faith. And with hope and expectation, we're looking for the kingdom to show up in our life 
to shift and to change and to turn things around that need to be turned around in our life. And so that, that's, a, that's a beautiful thing. I think in a nutshell, what you see is what you're going to get. Your outlook, yeah. where, where you focus. You know, The Word says that we look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. I've always loved that scripture, that I have to look to Him, that I have to, to set my affection on Him, that I have to believe that He is my source. I have to believe that He's the one that's going to, to see me through. Um, there, there, we are limited as natural human beings in this world of things that we can do on our own. You know, Paul said this, he said, I'm not sufficient of myself to think anything as being of myself or from myself. He said, our sufficiency is from God. Yeah. So there, there comes a time where we have to, to quit relying on ourselves and rely on God. We have to make the right decisions, the right choices. We have to do the right things. I mean, I don't think we throw it all on the Lord and say, well, Lord, you just work it all out. Because God works with us. You know, there's no saying the Lord helps those who help themselves. I'm not sure that's in the Bible. It's a great saying. But I, I think it's true that the Lord will help us if we desire to help ourselves. Yeah, and, and I think, you know, I think one of the one of the issues that we have to deal with, and I know we just have a a few more minutes left on this broadcast. Well, this, went, this went by fast. This was good. Um, but I think one of the issues that we have to, to deal with, Pastor Larry, is that really having a, a proper understanding and foundation on the word and about about the Lord and, and his kingdom and how his kingdom, his life and his spirit operate in us because there are there are many, I believe, have an erroneous belief system that well if God wants something to happen, he'll just do it. And like from the standpoint of like there's really nothing I can do, nothing I can say that's gonna make a difference. And I don't believe that's what the word teaches us about the kingdom. Um, no, we, we are not God. We're sons of God. But there is teachings of how we're to conduct ourselves, how we're to live our life, stand on faith, believe the best, um, confess the word, make declarations and decrees, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and then all these other things. So there, so there are teachings which, oh, by the way, believers and sons were also disciples, meaning that we adhere to and follow the teachings of Jesus and, and his life being the measuring stick and the pattern for us to follow. There are, there are, there are things on our part to do, and it's called live by faith. It's called believe. We want to encourage you today, wherever you are in your life, uh, we've kind of went away from what we were initially yeah. going to talk about today, but I, I want us to pick this back up. But we want to encourage you today to make a determination in your heart that you're going to live in victory. Victory is a wonderful thing. You know, I've experienced defeat at times, and I've experienced victory. Victory is a whole lot better. It's a whole lot better. It feels better. It looks better. And there's a better turnout when you have a victor mentality versus a victim mentality. And I can tell you today, one of my favorite scriptures, Paul said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. He's your helper. He's your strengthener. He's your go-to. Yeah. If you if there's anything in your life that you can rely on that you can go to, you can go to God and trust Him in everything you're facing. You've been listening to Faith to Live By with Larry Mellender and James Salter. Larry is the senior pastor of Church 360 in Tallahassee, and you're invited to join them for Sunday services at 9 a.m. and Wednesday services at 6.30 p.m. And find them online at church360.life. James is the senior pastor of Summit Life Church in Crawfordville, with Sunday morning prayer at 8 a.m. and worship at 10.30 a.m., and Wednesday Life Group is at 7 p.m. Find them online at summitlifechurch.net. To hear past programs, look up Faith to Live By in your podcast app. And join us every Thursday at 1130 for Faith to Live By here on Wave 94.